Welcome friends, it's Ray. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, I'm making another card using the Simon Says Stamp June Card Kit Etched Greetings. And this, with this card, I've designed um, a sketch. One of my blueprint design sketches that I'm going to use. And um, I will link to this. This is a free template for you. And uh, this is sketch number 111-6657. And yes, it makes an A7 5x7 card out of one sheet of 6x6 pattern paper. And of course we have that pattern paper from the kit, the Simon Says Stamp Kit. All right, so let's get started. Um, here's the pattern paper that I will be using. I love the pattern paper in this kit, the distressed look. So following my template, we're going to trim this pattern paper piece to four and a half by six. And um, so then we're going to start, this is going to be the top of our pattern, our card. So we want to cut off from the top. Um, a three-quarter inch piece and so this is roughly six inches tall so I can go all the way oh well let me turn it this way because this is the top and I just want to cut three-quarter inches off the top I know right I'm cutting right through flowers and then the second piece I want to do three quarter inches again. Now you can do it the opposite way. Just depends on, well this is not quite six inches, This or the piece wasn't quite six inches. So I'm going to do it from this side because I want my pieces to be fairly accurate. At least my three quarter inch pieces. Okay, and so I'm going to leave these in order. That's my first cut at three quarters and my second cut, this down, my second cut at three quarters of an inch. And then my third cut is going to be larger. It's going to be three inches from the top. This last piece, I want to cut two pieces, one that's three quarter inches. And again, I want to leave these in order. So let me just make sure normally when I do this design, I put them in order or keep them in order as I cut. And that's the best thing. So now I want another, since this is not quite, um, my pattern paper wasn't quite, well, it's just a sliver off um, from having been five, uh, six inches wide. Okay, so now just go ahead and cut this at three quarters and then I'm left with an almost three quarter inch strip. So minor, it is not really noticeable. And again, I want to keep these lined up so that my seam is, stays consistent. I'm bringing in green from my stash because I've already used the green, all of the green from the kit. And I want to cut this to this mat to four and three quarters by six and three quarters. I want to line this up on my mat and leave about about an eighth of an inch border all around and between each piece. I am using a mat uh, or I have a magnetic table underneath my mat. So I am just going to add my magnets to hold these pieces in place and um, doesn't matter really whether right now they are totally in position because I can adjust them as I go. I just want to have the spacing relatively relatively even and again we'll fix any anything that's not right I'll fix that as I go when I was 
designing this sketch, I initially thought I would um, have alternating uh, back and front pattern paper, but then because because of the way the pattern paper is designed with the florals, I decided to just keep it as a floral scene. Um, <clears throat> but I think it would also look great, depending upon your pattern paper, would look great if you alternate um, uh, your pattern paper designs uh, as you go down your your um, mat. I, I like that and, and I will do that I'm sure in a future video because again that's how I designed the sketch or why I designed the sketch the way it was. Um, I was thinking of that type of layout. Um, but you know you can use the sketch however you see fit. It is flexible uh, and it's just supposed to give you inspiration and then from there you can add your own spin to it. I've added my glue to this top piece and now I'm fixing it to my mat. And I chose, you know, a mat um, where the paper would kind of blend with the mat. So that's why I chose this, this apple green color. Uh, would have been nice, looked fine with a white also um, so you can just combine your colors and I'm just eyeballing it I'm gonna make sure I get my spacing a little better towards the end here or a little more consistent okay <clears throat> and if you don't you can always um, you know let's just say you get this far down and you decide you have more space down here than the two of these uh remaining pieces i would make sure that when i put these pieces down i get the spacing in between correct and then just trim off the bottom of my panel um if there's excess do it that way um, and that should work out fine as long as you don't have a whole lot left. That looks good. And I like to use liquid glue because when I'm doing a design like this, because I want to make sure I have wiggle room so that I have time to adjust the alignment of my pieces if needed. I have cut my vellum from the kit in half and just placed that in my misty. I want to stamp my sentiment. I brought in my die, circle die, that I'm going to use to cut out the sentiment, making sure I have enough so uh, room on the each side of my vellum to make sure I can die cut that circle after I stamp my sentiment. So now I'm prepping my panel for heat embossing and with my anti-static powder tool and bringing in my clear Versamark ink, which of course is hard to see on camera. Because it's hard to see the stamping, um, I am definitely stamping this uh, extra times uh, just to make sure I get a good impression. I'm bringing in my Alabaster White uh, Fine Detail Embossing Powder by Brutus Monroe and uh, we'll place that back in my jar when I'm done. And so I'm bringing in my heat tool and it's been setting over uh, on the side uh, heating up because you definitely with vellum want to make sure it's good and hot and start heating from the back and then bring it uh, for the last few seconds, just bring it to the front. I tape my circle to my vellum using low tack purple tape um, and die cut that. And here I'm bringing in some inexpensive gesso and I wanna tone down the shine on my um, dragonfly ephemera piece here. And I'm just using a sea sponge and uh, applying it lightly and then just um, buffing it off. And that's going to leave the distressed or matte finish that I want. This dries very quickly, but I will set it aside while I work on the rest of my card. 
I'm bringing in the Simon Says Stamp Micro Dots Sheet. This is great for adhering adhesive to vellum. And I use my bone folder to burnish uh, in my sentiment piece. And then off camera, I die cut um, a frame from the matte gold uh, piece paper in the kit and use the micro dots um, to affix it. And uh, for me, uh, that didn't work so well. Uh, so you will see uh, about when I discovered that and um, the micro dots work perfect for vellum because you can't, you know, it doesn't leave a film that you can see through. Uh, but for my frame, it didn't seem to stick as well. So instead, uh, what I do is bring in my tape runner. Uh, because I thought about my liquid glue, but then I didn't want that to ooze out of the side and mess up my vellum. So bringing in my tape runner uh, to make sure I can uh, get this affixed just so. And then I will use the tape runner just around the back perimeter, uh, right around where the gold is. And then I can affix this to my panel. And I do want it offset. So I've placed it so that it hangs off of the right edge of my panel. I bring in my dragonfly to make sure I have my um, sentiment where I want it before before I commit it to my panel. I pop my dragonfly up on foam squares uh, from the kit and now am going to go ahead and place it uh, with, on uh, my panel and commit it and then uh, also commit my sentiment. Here I will flip this over on uh, the back and use my long scissors to trim off that right edge of my sentiment um, circle. <laughs> so because I popped this up on foam tape, um, when I glue this to my card base, um, it's going to be harder for me to use my acrylic block, which is what I like to do. So um, instead, I have added some double-sided tape. I'm going to partially release it like I normally do. And um, because I'm not the best at lining, getting this lined up on my card base, what I'm going to do is add some liquid glue just to those exposed double-sided tape edges. I am liking this a lot lately uh, because it does still give me the wiggle room I need to make sure my card, ba um, card top or panel is positioned the right way on my card base. So it gives me time to get it positioned just so before committing. I'm bringing in my Elizabeth Craft gold peel off stickers to add uh, some gold, specks of gold embellishments throughout my panel. I also bring in my uh, Wink of Stella gold glitter pen and add uh, some gold to the center of quite a few of my larger flowers. I love this blueprint sketch design layout and I love the way this card turned out. I made a second card using the same design uh, and uses the butterfly ephemera and a yellowish uh, card pattern paper from the packet. So I wanted to show that to you. There's so much detail in this design, uh, but the pattern paper and the layout does most of the work. 
As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you like the video and will give me a thumbs up and subscribe if not already a subscriber. Until next time, good day friends.